So, okay, so I'm Sergio Alvarez. Uh, five or six years ago, I founded my own company, which is called Visuality. And during these last six years, I've met a lot of inter interesting people. Um, more and more and more interesting than myself. Uh, and we have been working with people at Google and NASA, different universities around the world, um, international organizations, UN agencies, big media, Wall Street Journal, New York Times. So we have been working with people that, that are really involved, that are really into this data world. Uh, we started the company because we really, we really wanted to bridge the gap between the people and the data. So talking with all these people, we always ended about uh, talking about the same concept. It's about democratization of the use of data, which is very important, and we have been talking about it at the beginning of, of today. So the thing is that we are getting more analytical as a society. So the model of someone decides and the other follows is being broken. So people really want to decide by themselves, but they only need the tools to do that. So data, it's a really hard thing to deal with. So we need to design and we need to, and we need to develop tools for removing those barriers between people and data. So I, for this photo, I took the batch of a doer. So I'm gonna try to inspire you with three projects I've been working on. So <clears throat> the first one is about the weather. So we have a lot of information about the weather today. We have a lot of models, prediction models, that try to predict how the weather will be in 100 years. But we didn't have any information about the weather in the past. We didn't have information about the weather 100 years ago. And this is very valuable information for developing new papers, for researching more and more. So we tried to recreate this weather. Um, we took more than 900,000 pages from the old logbooks that the Royal Navy had on their vessels during the First World War. And all of them were handwritten, but we wanted to digitize. All that information was in a very old uh, bookstore, in a old, very old library, and we wanted to digitize that information in order to be able to process it and analyze it and create new stories with it. So this is kind of things that we were working with. So as you can see, it's really hard to understand all this information, but Cape Tains had to put every single day information about the weather and about the position of the vessel. On the side, they put some notice about some notes about someone is marrying, um, we've lost like 10,000 kilos of chocolate, and that's for real, and this kind of stuff. So, okay, what should we do? If computers, doesn't, if computers don't, uh, cannot do it, because it's really hard for them to recognize all that handwritten information, we should hire someone. But if each page takes about two minutes, and we need to do like 10 times in order to avoid possible errors, and also, we don't give any holidays to that poor guy that is working on that, it will take 80 years. 80 years of a single person doing the same thing every single day. You don't want that job. Even being in Spain that is in a very hard moment, you don't want that job. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what we did, so we try to generate value out of the data. We try to empower people to work with this data. And we try to empower people to digitize all these information. So we created a website, which is called allweather.org, with the University of Oxford and, uh, Citizen Science, and the Citizen Science Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization for developing citizen science projects. And we ask people, we ask the people for doing that. So, the first thing we realized is that that was really fun. We wasn't expecting that. And people were having a lot of fun digitizing all this information, which is information that, I mean, they don't get any value. The only thing they can, they can get is that they can become the captain of a vessel if they are the most active user digitizing pages of that vessel. So they became like virtual captains, but we were really crazy about it. Um, People were having fun, and people were using the data for different things. So this is real thing. All this happened on the forums of the project. So someone lost his great great grandfather, and another user found it on another page. So it took six months to digitize all this information, and we didn't do anything, which is magic. 
So we prepare the tool and we empower people to work with the data. This project is really good, but this one is even better. So we try to discover planets on data where, Na where NASA couldn't. I mean, NASA started a mission which is called the Kepler mission, and we bet that they will be missing things. Why? Because computers are not very good recognizing patterns. So pattern recognition is something that we have in our mind, something that we can do really good, and computers don't. So we needed to create another time a tool to empower people to do this task. And we needed to prove that we could do it, and that humans are still better than computers doing some things. I have to say this, but we won. So we took all the data about the luminosity of different stars that the Kepler telescope was generating. So basically, the, the Kepler telescope was recording the luminosity of a lot of stars at the same time. And they were looking for something that they call transit, which is a very small eclipse that is provocated by something that is orbiting around the star and intersecting the trajectory between the telescope and the star. So that is, a, is a, a small dip in a graph. So we wanted to give that tool to the users so they could find these small transits. So we created a user interface, but basically we put all that information in a, in a graph, and we asked the users to detect all those transits. So I told you before that we won, and that's true. We have found two planets in data that NASA was missed before. So they have found almost 500 planets before us, but we have found two. And they were the, we were the second one, so. So yeah, so this is another time about the same thing. Another time we are trying to empower people to deal with data, which is really complex with the raw data, because it's, I mean, who likes mathematics here? Who likes statistics here? I mean, it's really hard. It's really hard to deal with the data. Uh, a lot of people is talking about data scientists. They are genius. I mean, it's really hard to find a very good data scientist. It's really hard to deal with the data. So we just need to take these people that they, they know how to deal with the data, and we need to create better tools. The third one, I promise, is the last one. This is the last one we are working on right now. We are trying to detect deforestation data. We are trying to detect deforestation on real time which allows us to stop deforestation when it is happening. So we can still do something because we are detecting in real time. So for this project, we are working with Google. We are working with the World Institute. We are working with different research organizations. And basically, we are analyzing a lot of satellite imagery. And we are looking, looking for differences in the color of the different pixels of each, Im of each image and the change over time. So with this, we can detect the areas, the areas where deforestation is happening right now. So we can, create, we can create the data, we can process it, but watching deforestation allows you and allows us to detect stories behind the data. I'm going to show you a couple of them. So th this is a website which is not launched. I think three days ago we were, we were on the science cover. So this is big. This is a very big project. Uh, the first paper has been published and is working. I mean, it's, it's really working. So this is in private beta. I cannot only I can only show some screenshots. So this is how you can visualize deforestation. You can drag and drop this bar, and then you can understand how the planet is getting totally deforested. So this, for example, by dragging and dropping this bar, you can see how deforestation evolves. But you can see also in which areas deforestation is not happening, and why. It's easy because we have protected areas. So with this technology, you can detect who, which protected areas are helping to protect the planet and which not, in, in, in terms of deforestation. But this story is even better. So if you drag and drop, you can detect easily areas where deforestation happens like really, really fast in a really weird way. So you start researching, and after changing the imagery we are using, this is taking a while. OK, there we go. I think it's the next one. OK. So by changing this imagery, you cannot see on the screen, but we can detect that it's a small thing on the white area. Can you see it there? 
So this is one of the most famous cases of corruption in Malaysia. This is the Bakum Dam. It's the dam that was built in order to generate energy that is not generating energy and has deforested a very big area. More than 7,000 7, uh, people has, has, uh, has been affected by this deforestation, by this, um, this big conflict. So, whoa, this is becoming crazy. Uh, okay. So another time, this is about empowering people. So this is about giving people the tools to take better decisions for health purposes, for improving our cities, for improving our science, for improving our policy making. So I just want to finish with something. So people is talking about data as data is the new oil, but we don't want data to be the new oil, right? I mean, I personally don't. I personally don't like data. I don't personally like this, 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 um, this sentence. So I don't like data to be the new oil. If we get data and if we treat data as the new oil, we will end with this, with international conflicts, with a lot of big teams, and we were ending, totally destroying our planet. So the best thing we can do is to generate these tools and this culture around the data that allows us to use in a more fair way and allow us to democratize the use of the data for taking better decisions. So I think I'm on time. Yes, one minute. So thank you very much. <laughs>